the Vikings be signing another wide receiver to add to this wide receiver group? We're going to be talking about that to start off today's show. And then also, coming up on the second half of today's show, we're going to be answering questions from Vikings fans in a mailbag during our weekly live shows here on the channel. So I can't wait to get into that. But before we dive into it, I got a question for you guys. Should the Vikings bring in another wide receiver? It's Justin Jefferson, Jordan Addison, but there's still that need at the wide receiver three spot. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments section. All right, let's take a look at the wide receiver room, how it shakes out right now. So obviously, you got the best non-quarterback in the National Football League in Justin Jefferson, knocking down that wide receiver one spot. Jordan Addison looks like the real deal, over 900 yards, 10 plus touchdowns last season. Um, he's a wide receiver too, no doubt about that. And then Brandon Powell, at the wide receiver three spot. I like Brandon Powell. Had no issues with him. I think he would be a great, a great wide receiver three. But you could still get an upgrade there. You got guys like Nikhil Harry, Jalen Naylor, who I do want to talk about here in a second. But maybe the Vikings could go out and sign a guy. And here are the top five uh, free agent wide receivers that are currently still available. You got Cincinnati Bengals uh, wide receiver Tyler Boyd. You got Odell Beckham. You got former Saints legend Michael Thomas, Raiders receiver Hunter Redenfro, and then you also have McCole Hardman. I would like all these guys to come in and be a wide receiver three, but I think it's just going to come down to if the Vikings are going to want to, you know, allocate their funds and allocate their, you know, final, you know, few million dollars they have of cap space to the wide receiver three spot. But hey, man, if the Vikings signed either of these five guys, they would have the best wide receiver group in the National Football League, no doubt about it. But an internal option for Minnesota. This is my man right here, Jalen Naylor. And I've been on him since the Vikings took him out of the sixth round from Michigan State. And I thought he was a, a potential breakout candidate with Minnesota next season. But he runs super silky routes. He's super fast. Kind of reminds me, you know, a little, a little Stephon Diggs light. A little Stephon Diggs light is Jalen Naylor. But I think if he got his chance to be the wide receiver three, uh, I think he would really flourish. So that's who I would want the Vikings to go with as their third option. Maybe it's a little mix and match of a guy like, you know, Jalen Naylor and Brandon Powell, but that's who I would go with. I just want to see if the Vikings had anything with the, you know, six-round receiver. That Obviously, Rick Spielman did draft him, and hey, Rick Spielman, you know, whatever you think of him, the dude knows how to draft receivers. I mean, Thielen, Diggs, Jefferson, so I would like to see Jalen Naylor get his shot, but we did have a $50 super chat on today's show coming in from my man, Skolger, and he just had one thing to say. He said, J.J., to J.J., talking about J.J. McCarthy throwing the Justin Jefferson. Hey, man, I would love to see it. Also, how great would that call be, whether it's from me on our watch parties or Paul Allen, the play-by-play -play guy for the Vikings, them screaming out, J.J., the J.J. for six. I think it would absolutely be electric. So, hey, Skoldra, I really appreciate you showing support here on the channel. Did it through our watch parties all last season. So, seriously, shout out to you. Everybody show them some love down in the comments section. Well, let's kick it to Bobby Wagner here, a spy tuning in on today's show saying should the Vikings swing big and trade for Brandon Ayuk okay yeah this would definitely be swinging big so let's break it down here um Brandon Ayuk guys I think he's one of the more underrated receivers and just underrated players in the National Football League a great great route runner um the only thing is with trading for Ayuk it's gonna obviously cost draft capital and it may cost you know a first or a second round pick and then you're also gonna have to pay the guy and if the Vikings you, know, you haven't paid Justin Jefferson already you're going to tell me you're going to go pay Brandon Ayuk before you pay Justin Jefferson. I just don't really like that message it would send in the locker room. But, hey, man, Brandon Ayuk's a great player. And if you could somehow have Ayuk, Addison, and Jefferson, I mean, that would be one of the greatest wide receiver rooms we would ever see of all time. But I just don't really think it, think it makes too, too much sense for Minnesota considering the draft capital and you would have to extend him. So I would just be out on Ayuk. Nothing against him as a player. I just don't really think it makes you know too much sense for the Vikings as a team right now. But we'll get the more questions from the real ones here in a second. But first, I got to tell you guys about today's sponsor, and that is Game Time. If you guys are planning on going to any, you know, Minnesota Wild, Timberwolves, Twins games, whatever it may be that requires you to buy a ticket, I really encourage you guys to download the Game Time app. And if you guys use code Chat Sports, C H A T S P O R T S, we'll hook you guys up with twenty dollars off your first purchase hey uh minnesota twins games you guys see it on top right of your screen right now 14 bucks you get 20 dollars off you're getting a ticket for free so definitely i would suggest 
Download the Game Time app. Uh, it's the best ticket purchasing app out there. It's the best seat, the lowest price guaranteed. And I love that prices drop as the event gets closer. No matter who it is, Timberwolves, Wilds, Twins, whatever it may be, get hooked up today. Use code CHATSPORTS and we'll hook you guys up with $20 off. Joe Biddo coming in and saying, how does the trade with Diggs have to, or what does the trade with Diggs have to do with us? Why did we give up a trade? Um, so if you guys didn't know, the news of the day um, was that Stefan Diggs was traded to the Houston Texans. And, you know, just looking back on it, I think the Vikings won that trade. Like, you know, obviously Justin Jefferson was the selection that the Vikings got with the first round pick that they got from Buffalo. Um, I thought it was a great move by Minnesota at the time, and it ended up working out because now we still have Jefferson on his rookie contract, and Buffalo has already shipped Minnesota or shipped Stephon Diggs out the door. And actually, funny enough, the second round pick that the Vikings sent to the Houston Texans, they sent that second round pick to Buffalo to go land uh, Stephon Diggs. But hey, nothing bad, nothing bad against Diggs. I'm just happy he's uh, you know going somewhere else. But Bulls Nation coming in with a question saying, should Minnesota? call Ryan Tannehill um no I just I, I just don't really think there's any reason for that right now uh you already got Sam Darnold and we're all anticipating the Vikings do draft a quarterback so I'm out on him um I would have liked him if the Vikings didn't have a bridge quarterback right now you know I had some of my top options of like Sam Darnold with Jacoby Brissett and obviously Tannehill but I just don't I, I just don't really think it makes too too much sense as it stands right now Skull Nation saying hashtag Vikings the Vikings should trade three next year's first and the 11th and keep 23rd. Oh, their next year's first and 11th and keep 23. I actually love that idea. Um, I was actually going to do a wild trade video idea here on the channel coming up shortly. Uh, Skull Nation, that would definitely be on there because then this would allow the Vikings, and this, this trade would be probably to get the fifth overall pick or the fourth overall pick. But if you package next year's first and 11, go get J.J. McCarthy. And then at 23, you could go get one of those big fellows from Texas or Jerzon Newton from Illinois. I would absolutely love that. Great idea, idea Skull Nation. I uh, really appreciate that question. Dr. 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 Pepper, 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 coming with a question. Shout out to you, man. I appreciate it. Saying, do we know if J.J. is in or being involved in the choice of quarterback? Need to keep this man happy. Uh, yes, he is. I do have good news. Kevin O'Connell did talk about that a couple weeks ago, and he says we have been hand-in-hand hand with Justin Jefferson this entire time. So uh, the Vikings are handling this the right way because we got the report early on this offseason Jefferson would not sign an extension without knowing the quarterback plan. Well, it turns out he does uh, know that. So that is a definite good thing. Free real estate or free real estate coming in saying, if you had to call it right now, what do the Vikings do in the draft? Okay, a little prediction time. Um, if I had the call right now, I think this is a tough question because uh, I'm between two options. I know how much the Minnesota Vikings want to go get Drake May. I just don't know, even if they could trade up the three, that he would end up being there. Um, I think if I had the call right now, what the Vikings do is that it's going to be a draft day trade where they and go get J.J. McCarthy with trading up for the Los Angeles Chargers. I think the Chargers will be open to um, trading back just because I think Harbaugh is going to want to build a more complete roster. I think they would rather have two really good players instead of one great player from this draft. So, I, so if I had to call right now, a draft day trade, Vikings send 11 and 23 to Los Angeles, and they go draft J.J. McCarthy. Bulls Nation saying, should Minnesota trade Andrew Booth Jr. to Kansas City for a day two pick? Yeah, 100%. The only thing is you're not getting a day two pick for Andrew Booth. Uh, I like the thought of that. I would do that in a heartbeat. And maybe Kansas City, with them just losing LeJarrius Sneed, maybe they say screw it um, and we're going to go draft um, the Clemson corner. But, yeah, I just, I, I just don't know if Booth would go for a day two. And also, I'm not completely out on Booth just yet. I would want him to stay maybe just for one more season just to see if maybe Flores can get the most out of him. But, hey, great thought right there. Eric Mott coming in saying, I want Darnold to be great because that means wins. Wins, wins, wins. Yes, 100%. Because, guys, with the way the Vikings roster is loaded up right now, if Sam Darnold plays good and he has a great year for Minnesota, the Vikings are probably winning 10 to 11 games. Um, you know, this is a team that won seven games last season without Aaron Jones, 
without Kirk Cousins, without Justin Jefferson. You add all those guys back. Yes, you did lose to Neil Hunter, but you brought in Jonathan Grenard, Andrew Van Ginkle. I think the Vikings have one of the best coaching staffs now in the National Football League with Josh McCown, Kevin O'Connell, Brian Flores, Wes Phillips. Like, they have a loaded uh, coaching staff. And, you know, if Darnold ends up working out, maybe he doesn't play up to that top three pick potential, but let's just say he plays up to a first-round pick potential and he's just a serviceable quarterback. Vikings will win a whole lot of games. Bulls Nation saying if Minnesota doesn't do well, Minnesota go after Coach Prime, and next season he drafted his son. That would be something. Let's just say it is a disaster this year. The Vikings don't draft a quarterback, and they you know make two selections at 11 and 23, and then they're sitting there, and they fire Kevin O'Connell. Then they trade up for Shador and hire Deion Sanders. Man, that would be an interesting thought. But, again, I would – I probably have a better chance of being struck by like lightning and walking out of the office than that happening. But Bulls Nation, really love the thought. Definitely got creative on that one. And if you guys made it to the end of today's mailbag, watch the entire thing. A little real one roll call to end today's show. Give me a skull down in the comment section. I love seeing the skulls come in at the end of the show because then I get to see who watched it all the way through. Then also, guys, hit that sub button. We're going to be going live here during the draft for the channel. So if you guys could, lock us in as you go to Vikings YouTube channel. Appreciate all the support we've been getting on the channel as of late. But we'll see you guys next time. As always, Skull Vikes, baby.